Welcome back to another math lesson hosted by Book and Table. I am your math tutor, Maurice Wright, and this video is practice set number one to the inverse functions chapter. You will have an opportunity to practice determining if a function is one-to-one -one by graphing. You will then restrict the domain of a function when functions are both in vertex and trinomial form. You'll have an opportunity to practice graphing the inverse of a function. We'll go through the composition of functions to practice determining if two functions are inverses of each other. And then we'll wrap up the video by practicing finding the inverse function to a specific function. Should you have any follow-up questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section. Or you can contact a tutor in your neighborhood by visiting bookandtable.com or by downloading our app on the App Store. Question number one. Determine if the function is one-to-one -one by graphing. And we're given f of x is equal to 3x plus 2. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step 1. Evaluate f of x with 5 different input values. So we will use negative 2 through positive 2 for our x's or our inputs, and we will record the corresponding y values or output values, and together we'll put these ordered pairs in a table of values for f of x. So f of negative 2 is equal to 3 times negative 2, which would give us negative 6 and negative 6 plus 2 is equal to negative 4. So the input is negative 2 and the output is negative 4. f of negative 1 is equal to 3 times negative 1, which would give us negative 3. And negative 3 plus 2 is equal to negative 1. So the input is negative 1 and the output is negative 1 f of 0 is equal to 3 times 0, which is 0, and 0 plus 2 is equal to 2, so the input is 0 and the output is 2. f of 1 is equal to 3 times 1, which would give us 3, and 3 plus 2 is equal to 5, so the input is 1 and the output is positive 5. And f of 2 is equal to 3 times 2, which is 6. And 6 plus 2 is equal to 8. So the input is 2 and the output is 8. And now that we have a few ordered pairs from this function, we can take these ordered pairs in the table of values and plot these points on a coordinate plane. So our first point is negative 2, negative 4. Our second point is negative 1, negative 1. Our third point is 0, 2. Our fourth point is 1, 5. And our fifth point is 2, 8. And now with these points, we can sketch f of x. And now that we have f of x, we can use a horizontal line to determine if f of x is 1 to 1. And since a horizontal line does not cross more than one point anywhere along f of x, that lets us know that f of x is 1 to 1 and the inverse function does exist. So that is the answer to question number one. Let's now have a look at question number two. Determine if the function is 1 to 1 by graphing and we are given f of x is equal to negative x squared minus 1. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step 1. 
evaluate f of x with five different input values. f of negative 2 would give us negative 2 squared would be positive 4. And negative 1 times 4 would give us negative 4 here. And negative 4 minus 1 is equal to negative 5. So the input is negative 2 and the output is negative 5 f of negative 1 would be equal to negative 1 squared would be 1 and negative 1 times 1 would give us negative 1 here and negative 1 minus 1 would be equal to negative 2 so the input is negative 1 and the output is negative 2 f of 0 is equal negative 0 squared would be 0 here and 0 minus 1 is equal to negative 1. So the input is 0 and the output is negative 1. f of 1 is equal to 1 squared would be 1. Negative 1 times 1 would give us negative 1 here. And negative 1 minus 1 is equal to negative 2. So the input is positive 1 and the output is negative 2. And f of 2 is equal to 2 squared would be 4. Negative 1 times 4 would be negative 4 here. And negative 4 minus 1 is equal to negative 5. So the input is 2 and the output is negative 5. And now with this table of values, we can plot the points for f of x on a coordinate plane. So our first point is negative 2, negative 5. Our second point is negative 1, negative 2. Our third point is 0, negative 1. Our fourth point is 1, negative 2. And our fifth point is 2, negative 5. And if we draw a line through these points, we can sketch f of x. And now that we have f of x sketched, we can use a horizontal line to determine if f of x is 1 to 1. And since a horizontal line can cross the function here and here, that means it is not 1 to 1. And since f of x is not 1 to 1, we know the inverse does not exist. So that is the answer to question number two. Let's now have a look at question number three. Determine if the function is one to one by graphing and we are given f of x is equal to x cubed plus one. Pause the video, answer this question and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, evaluate f of x with five different input values. f of negative two is equal to negative two cubed, which would be negative eight, and negative eight plus one is equal to negative seven. So the input is negative two and the output is negative seven. f of negative one is equal to negative one cubed, which would be negative one and negative 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. So the input is negative 1 and the output is 0. f of 0 is equal to 0 cubed plus 1, which would be equal to 1. So the input is 0 and the output is 1. f of 1 is equal to 1 cubed, which is 1, plus 1 is equal to 2. So the input is 1 and the output is 2. And f of 2 is equal to 2 cubed, which is 8. And 8 plus 1 is equal to 9. So the input is 2 and the output is 9. And now that we have a few points we can use to sketch the function, step 3 is to plot the points from the table of values on a coordinate plane. Our first point is negative 2, negative 7. Our second point is negative 1, 0. 
Our third point is zero one. Our fourth point is one two. And our fifth point is two nine. And we can now draw a line through those points to get a sketch of f of x. And now that we have a sketch of f of x, we can use a horizontal line to test if the function is one to one. And we see that along this curve, the horizontal line only crosses one point at any time, letting us know that the function is one to one, which means the inverse function does exist. So that is the answer to question number three. Let's now have a look at question number four. Determine if the function is one to one by graphing. And we are given f of x is equal to negative x to the fourth plus two. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, evaluate f of x with five different input values. f of negative two would be equal to, negative two to a power of four would be 16, and negative one times 16 would give us negative 16 here, and negative 16 plus two would be equal to negative 14. So the input is negative two and the output is negative 14 f of negative 1 would give us negative 1 to a power of 4 would be positive 1. And negative 1 times positive 1 would give us negative 1 here. And negative 1 plus 2 would be equal to positive 1. So the input is negative 1 and the output is positive 1. f of 0 would be equal to negative 0 to the fourth is 0 plus 2 would be equal to positive 2. So the input is 0 and the output is positive 2. f of 1 would be equal to 1 to a power of 4 would be 1. And negative 1 times 1 would give us negative 1 here. And negative 1 plus 2 would be equal to positive 1. So the input is 1 and the output is 1. And f of 2 would be equal to 2 to a power of 4 would be 16. And negative 1 times 16 would give us negative 16 here. And negative 16 plus 2 would be equal to negative 14. So the input is 2 and the output is negative 14. And now step 3, we want to plot the points from the table of values here on a coordinate plane. Our first point is negative 2, negative 14. Our second point is negative 1, positive 1. Our third point is 0, 2. Our fourth point is 1, 1. And our fifth point is 2, negative 14. And now we draw a line through these points to sketch f of x. And once we have f of x sketched, we can now use the horizontal line test to see if f of x is one to one. And since a horizontal line crosses the function here and here, we know that f of x is not one to one, which lets us know the inverse function does not exist. That is the answer to question number four. Let's now have a look at question number five. Restrict the domain of the function so it is one to one and check the answer. And we are given f of x is equal to x plus four squared minus three. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin.
Step one, set the expression inside of the parentheses equal to zero. So that would be x plus four is equal to zero. And now step two, we want to solve for x. And we'll do so by subtracting four from both sides. So that shows us that x is equal to zero minus four, which is negative four. And this lets us know that the line of symmetry for this quadratic is going to be on the x-axis at negative four. So step three, set x to less than or equal to negative four. And step four, set x to greater than or equal to negative four. And our answer would be, we can restrict this domain for x is less than or equal to negative four, or we can restrict it for x is greater than or equal to negative four. And now step five, we can check the answer by plugging in two numbers equidistant from negative four. So we'll go one below to negative five and one above to negative three. F of negative five is equal to negative five plus four, which would be negative one. And negative one squared would be positive one. And one minus three is equal to negative two. So f of negative five is equal to negative two. So if we plug in f of negative three, we want it to equal negative two to let us know that this answer is correct. When we do so, f of negative three is equal to negative three plus four, which is one. One squared is one. And one minus three is equal to negative two. So since f of negative five and f of negative three both equal negative two, that confirms that the answer for question number five is the domain can be restricted at x is less than or equal to negative four or x is greater than or equal to negative four. So that is the answer to question number five. Let's now have a look at question number six. Restrict the domain of the function so it is one to one and check the answer. And we are given f of x is equal to negative three times two x minus one squared plus one. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, set the expression inside of the parentheses equal to zero. So we'll take two x minus one and set it equal to zero. And now step two, we want to solve for x. So we'll begin by adding one to both sides, showing us two x is equal to zero plus one, which is one. And now to remove this coefficient of two, we want to divide both sides by two showing us x is equal to 1 half, which is 0 0.5 in decimal form. So the next thing we want to do is set x to less than or equal to 1 half, or x is greater than or equal to 1 half. So for question number six, we can restrict the domain at x is less than or equal to 0 0.5, or x is greater than or equal to 0 0.5. And we can check the answer by plugging in two numbers equidistant from 1 half or 0 0.5. So we'll first plug in f of zero and then we'll plug in f of one. And f of zero is equal. Here we have two times zero, which is zero. And zero minus one is negative one. Negative one squared would be one. So negative three times one is negative three and negative three plus one is equal to negative two. So we find that f of zero is equal to negative two. So we know this is the correct answer if f of positive one is also equal to negative two. f of one would give us, inside of the parentheses here, we have two times one, which is two, and two minus one would be equal to one. One squared is one, and negative three times one is negative three. 
and negative 3 plus 1 is equal to negative 2. So since f of 0 and f of 1 both give us the same output value of negative 2, that confirms that f of x can be restricted for x is less than or equal to 0 0.5 or x is greater than or equal to 0 0.5. So that is the answer to question number six. Let's now have a look at question number seven. Restrict the domain of the function so it is one to one and check the answer. And we are given f of x is equal to negative, negative five minus x squared plus two. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, set the expression inside of the parentheses equal to zero. So that would be negative five minus x is equal to zero. And now step two, we want to solve for x. So we'll begin by adding five to both sides, showing us that negative x is equal to zero plus five, which is five. And now to get rid of this coefficient of negative one, we divide both sides by negative one, showing us x is equal to five divided by negative one, which is negative five. So this is where our line of symmetry for this quadratic exists. So step three, we want to set x to less than or equal to negative five. And step four, we want to set x to greater than or equal to negative five showing us f of x can be restricted for x is less than or equal to negative five, or x is greater than or equal to negative five. And now we can check the answer by plugging in two numbers equidistant from negative five. So we'll go one below to negative six, and then we'll go one up to negative four. And f of negative six is equal to Negative five minus negative six would be negative five plus six, which is positive one. And positive one squared is one. Negative one times one is negative one. And negative one plus two would be equal to positive one. So we find that f of negative six is equal to one. So now we want to test f of negative four to see if that also equals positive one. And we get negative five minus negative four would be equal to negative five plus four, which is negative one. Negative one squared is positive one. And negative one times positive one would give us negative one here. And negative one plus two would be equal to one. So we find that f of negative four is also equal to positive one, which confirms that f of x can be restricted for x is less than or equal to negative five, or x is greater than or equal to negative five. So that is the answer to question number seven. Let's now have a look at question number eight. Restrict the domain of the function so it is one to one and check the answer. And we are given f of x is equal to four times negative three plus x over two squared minus one. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, set the expression inside of the parentheses equal to zero. So that gives us negative three plus x over two is equal to zero. And now we want to solve for x. So we'll begin by adding three to both sides, showing us that x over two is equal to zero plus three, which is three. And now we can multiply both sides by two to negate this coefficient of one half. 
So that shows us that x is equal to 3 times 2, which is 6. And since we find that x is equal to 6, we then know that we can restrict this domain by setting x to less than or equal to 6, or x is greater than or equal to 6. So the answer to question number 8 is f of x can be restricted for x is less than or equal to 6, or x is greater than or equal to 6. And now we can check the answer by plugging in two numbers equidistant from 6. So we'll go down 2 to 4 and go up 2 to 8. We'll use even numbers since what we're plugging in will be divided by 2. So f of 4 is equal to, inside of the parentheses we have 4 over 2 which is 2. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1 and negative one squared would be one. So four times one would give us four minus one, which is three. So we find that f of four is equal to positive three. And now we'll plug in f of eight. And that gives us, inside of the parentheses, we have eight divided by two, which is four. And negative three plus four is equal to positive one. 1 squared is 1, so 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. So since f of 4 and f of 8 both produce an output of 3, that confirms that f of x can be restricted for x is less than or equal to 6, or x is greater than or equal to 6. So that is how we complete question number eight. Let's now have a look at question number nine. Restrict the domain of the function so it is one to one and check the answer. And we are given f of x is equal to x squared minus two x minus eight. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, calculate h using the coefficients. So our coefficient of the quadratic would be one. And the coefficient of the x term is negative two. So h is equal to negative b, which is negative two, divided by two times a. So h is equal to this negative times this negative, cancel each other out giving us two divided by two, which is one. So since we find that h is equal to one, that lets us know that the line of symmetry for this quadratic is where x is equal to one. So step two, we want to set x to less than or equal to one. And step three, we want to set x to greater than or equal to one. So the answer to question number nine is f of x can be restricted for x is less than or equal to one, or x is greater than or equal to one. And we can check the answer by plugging in two numbers that are equidistant from one. So we can go down to zero, and then we can go up to two. So f of zero is equal to zero squared, which is zero, minus two times zero, which is zero, minus eight, so we find that f of zero is equal to negative eight. So now we want to see if f of two is also equal to negative eight. So f of two is equal to two squared, which is four, minus two times two, which is negative four, minus eight. Four minus four is zero, and zero minus eight is equal to negative eight. So this confirms that f of x can be restricted for x is less than or equal to 1, or x is greater than or equal to 1. So that is how we complete question number 9. Let's now have a look at question number 10. 
restrict the domain of the function so it is one to one and check the answer. And we are given f of x is equal to negative two x squared plus three x minus one. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, calculate h using the coefficients. So h is equal to negative b divided by two times a. b is the coefficient of the x term, which is three. And a is the coefficient of the quadratic term, which is negative two. So this negative and this negative cancel each other out. And two times two is four showing us h is equal to 3 over 4, which in decimal form is 0 0.75. And since we find that h is equal to 0 0.75, we know that this quadratic has a line of symmetry on the x-axis at 0 0.75. So step two, we want to set x to less than or equal to 0 0.75. In step three, we want to set x to greater than or equal to 0 0.75. So the answer to question number 10 is f of x can be restricted for x is less than or equal to 0 0.75 or x is greater than or equal to 0 0.75. And we can check this answer by plugging in two numbers equidistant from 0 0.75. So we'll go down to 0 and then we'll go up to 1.5 and f of 0 is equal to negative two times zero squared, which is zero, plus three times zero, which is zero, minus one. So f of zero is equal to negative one. So we want to plug in f of 1.5 to see if it produces an output of negative one also. And f of 1.5 is equal, here we have 1.5 squared, which gives us 2.25 and negative two times 2.25 is negative 4.5. Up here we have three times 1.5, which is 4.5 and 4.5 minus one is 3.5. So we get negative 4.5 plus 3.5, which is negative one. So this confirms that f of x can be restricted for x is less than or equal to 0 0.75, or x is greater than or equal to 0 0.75. So that is the answer to question number 10. Let's now have a look at question number 11. Restrict the domain of the function so it is one to one and check the answer. And we are given f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 7. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step 1. Calculate h using the coefficients. So our b is 3 and our a is positive 1. So we find that h is equal to negative 3 divided by 2, which is negative 1.5. So since we find that h is equal to negative 1.5, we know that this quadratic has a line of symmetry on the x-axis where x is equal to negative 1.5. So step 2, we want to set x to less than or equal to negative 1.5. In step three, we want to set x to greater than or equal to negative 1.5. So f of x can be restricted for x is less than or equal to negative 1.5, or x is greater than or equal to negative 1.5. And now we can check this answer by plugging in two numbers that are equidistant from negative 1.5. So we'll go down to negative two, and then we'll go up to negative one. So f of negative two is equal to 
negative 2 squared is 4, plus 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, plus 7. 4 minus 6 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 7 is positive 5. So we find that f of negative 2 is equal to 5. So we want to test f of negative 1 to see if it produces an output of positive 5 as well. And we get negative 1 squared, which is 1, plus 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3, plus 7. 1 minus 3 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 7 is positive 5. So this confirms that f of x can be restricted for x is less than or equal to negative 1.5, or x is greater than or equal to negative 1.5. So that is how we complete question number 11. Let's now have a look at question number 12. Restrict the domain of the function so it is 1 to 1 and check the answer. And we are given f of x is equal to 5x squared minus 4x minus 2. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, calculate h using the coefficients. So our a will be positive five and our b is negative four. And h is equal to negative b divided by two times a. So we find that h is equal to this negative times this negative cancel each other out. And in the denominator, we get two times five, which is 10. So we wind up with four divided by 10 which shows us that h is equal to 0 0.4. And since we find that h is equal to 0 0.4, that lets us know that the line of symmetry exists on the x-axis at 0 0.4. So step two, we want to set x to less than or equal to 0 0.4. And step three, we want to set x to greater than or equal to 0 0.4. So the answer to question number 12 is f of x can be restricted for x is less than or equal to 0 0.4, or x is greater than or equal to 0 0.4. And we can check the answer by plugging in two numbers equidistant from 0 0.4. So we'll go down to 0, and then we'll go up to 0 0.8. f of 0 is equal to 5 times 0 squared, which is 0, minus 4 times 0, which is 0, minus two would give us negative two. So we find that f of zero is equal to negative two. So now we want to test f of 0 0.8 to see if we get an output of negative two. So f of 0 0.8 would give us, here we have 0 0.8 squared, which would be 0 0.64. And five times 0 0.64 is equal to 3.2. Up here, we have negative 4 times 0 0.8, which is negative 3.2 minus 2. And negative 3.2 minus 2 is negative 5.2. So we get f of 0 0.8 is equal to 3.2 minus 5.2, which is negative 2, confirming that f of x can be restricted for x is less than or equal to 0 0.4 or x is greater than or equal to 0 0.4. So that is the answer to question number 12. Let's now have a look at question number 13. Graph the function and the inverse function. And we're given f of x is equal to x plus 5. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, evaluate f of x with five different input values. 
We will then record those x and y values in a table of values for the original function. So f of negative 2 would be equal to negative 2 plus 5, which is positive 3. So the x value is negative 2 and the y value is positive 3 f of negative 1 would give us negative 1 plus 5, which is positive 4. So the x value is negative 1 and the y value is positive 4. f of 0 would be equal to 0 plus 5, which is 5. So the x value would be 0 and the y value would be 5. f of 1 would give us 1 plus 5, which is equal to 6. So the x value is 1 and the y value is 6. And f of 2 is 2 plus 5, which is equal to 7. And now with a table of values for the original function, we can create a table for the inverse function by switching each x, y in these ordered pairs of the original function. And that will then give us the ordered pairs for the inverse function. So negative 2, positive 3 becomes positive 3, negative 2. Negative 1, positive 4 becomes positive 4, negative 1. 0, 5 becomes 5, 0. 1, 6 becomes 6, 1. And 2, 7 becomes 7, 2. And now that we have table of values for the original function and the inverse function, we can now sketch both of these functions on a coordinate plane. So we'll start by plotting the points from the table of values for f of x. The first point is negative 2, positive 3. The second point is negative 1, positive 4. The third point is 0, 5. The fourth point is 1, 6. And the fifth point is 2, 7. And now with these points, we can sketch f of x by drawing a line through these points. So this is f of x. And now we can plot the points from the table of values for the inverse function. So our first point is 3, negative 2. Our second point is 4, negative 1. Our third point is 5, 0. Our fourth point is 6, 1. And our fifth point is 7, 2. And now we can use these points to sketch the inverse function. And we see that f of x and the inverse function are mirror images across y is equal to x. So this would be the sketches to f of x and the inverse function. So that is how we solve question number 13. Let's now have a look at question number 14. Sketch the function and the inverse function. And we're given f of x is equal to 4x minus 1. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step 1. Evaluate f of x with five different input values. And then step two, record the input and output values from step one in a table of values. f of negative two would be equal to four times negative two would give us negative eight. And negative eight minus one is equal to negative nine. So the x value is negative two and the y value is negative nine f of negative 1 would give us 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. 
and negative four minus one is equal to negative five. So the x value is negative one and the y value is negative five. f of zero is equal to four times zero, which is zero. And zero minus one is equal to negative one. So the x value is zero and the y value is negative one. f of one is equal to four times one, which is four. And four minus one is equal to three. So the x value is one and the y value is three. And f of two would be equal to four times two, which is eight. And eight minus one is equal to seven. So the x value is two and the y value is seven. And now that we have a table of values for f of x, we can create a table of values for the inverse function by switching each x, y in the ordered pairs to create the ordered pairs for the inverse function. So negative two, negative nine becomes negative nine, negative two. Negative one, negative five becomes negative five, negative one. Zero, negative one becomes negative one, zero. One, three becomes three, one. And two, seven becomes seven, two. And now we can begin sketching each function. So we'll plot the points from the table of values for f of x on a coordinate plane. Now for this function, I'm going to plot these four points because negative nine won't fit on this coordinate plane with the scale I'll be using. So our first point is negative one, negative five. Our second point is zero, negative one. Our third point is one, three. And our fourth point is two, seven. And now with these four points, we can draw a line through these points to get a sketch of f of x. And now we take the table for the inverse function and plot those points. Again, we won't always need all of the points from our table based on the scale we're using for our coordinate plane. This x value of negative nine does not fit on this coordinate plane. So we'll begin with negative five, negative one. The next point is negative one, zero. The next point is three, one. And the next point is seven, two, which is pretty much off this coordinate plane. And now with these points, we can sketch our inverse function. And we see these two lines reflect each other across y is equal to x. So that is the answer to question number 14. Let's now have a look at question number 15. Graph the function and the inverse function. And we're given f of x is equal to x squared minus three for x is greater than or equal to zero. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, evaluate f of x with five different input values. The domain is restricted to x is greater than or equal to zero. So we'll start at zero for our input values and work our way up from there. So f of zero would give us zero squared, which is zero. And zero minus three is equal to negative three. So the x value is zero and the y value is negative three. f of one gives us one squared, which is one and one minus three is equal to negative two. So the x value is one and the y value is negative two. F of two gives us two squared, which is four, and four minus three is equal to one. 
So the x value is 2 and the y value is 1. f of 3 gives us 3 squared, which is 9. And 9 minus 3 is equal to 6. So the x value is 3 and the y value is 6. And f of 4 is equal to 4 squared, which is 16. And 16 minus 3 is equal to 13. So the x value is 4 and the y value is 13. And now with this table of values for f of x, we can switch each x, y in these ordered pairs to create the table of values for the inverse function. So 0, negative 3 becomes negative 3, 0. 1, negative 2 becomes negative 2, 1. 2, 1 becomes 1, 2. 3, 6 becomes 6, 3. And 4, 13 becomes 13, 4. And now that we have table of values for both functions, we can begin graphing the functions. So we'll begin by plotting the points from the table of values for f of x. The first point we plot is 0, negative 3. The next point is 1, negative 2. The next point is 2, 1. The next point is 3, 6. Our last point, 4, 13, would not fit on this coordinate plane. So we'll exclude it from this graph. But that's fine because with these four points, if we draw a line through those points, we will get the graph of f of x. And now since we have f of x sketched, we can plot the points from the table of values for the inverse function. So we'll start with negative 3, 0. The next point is negative 2, positive 1. The next point is 1, 2. And the next point is 6, 3. 13, 4 won't fit on this coordinate plane, but that's fine because with these four points, we can sketch the inverse function by drawing a line through those points. And we see that f of x and the inverse function reflect across the line y is equal to x. So this would be the answer to question number 15. And that is how you solve question number 15. Let's now have a look at question number 16. Graph the function and the inverse function. We're given f of x is equal to negative x squared plus 2 for x is less than or equal to 0. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step 1. Evaluate f of x with five different input values. So our domain is restricted for x is less than or equal to 0. So we'll start at 0 and work our way down from there. f of 0 would be negative 0 squared is 0. Plus 2 would give us 2. So the x value is 0 and the y value is 2 f of negative 1 would give us negative 1 squared would be 1 and negative 1 times 1 would give us negative 1 here and negative 1 plus 2 is equal to positive 1 so the x value is negative 1 and the y value is positive 1 f of negative 2 would give us negative 2 squared would be 4 Negative 1 times 4 would give us negative 4 here. And negative 4 plus 2 is equal to negative 2. So the x value is negative 2 and the y value is negative 2. f of negative 3 gives us negative 3 squared, which is 9. 
and negative 1 times 9 is negative 9, and negative 9 plus 2 is equal to negative 7. So the x value is negative 3 and the y value is negative 7. And f of negative 4 gives us negative 4 squared, which is 16. Negative 1 times 16 gives us negative 16 here. And negative 16 plus 2 would be equal to negative 14. So the x value is negative 4 and the y value is negative 14. And now with this table of values, we can create a table of values for the inverse function by switching each x, y. So 0, 2 becomes 2, 0. Negative 1, 1 becomes 1, negative 1. Negative 2, negative 2 remains negative 2, negative 2. Negative 3, negative 7 becomes negative 7, negative 3. And negative 4, negative 14 becomes negative 14, negative 4. And now we can begin plotting the points for f of x on a coordinate plane. The first point would be 0, 2. The second point would be negative 1, 1. The third point would be negative 2, negative 2. And the fourth point would be negative 3, negative 7. Negative 4, negative 14 wouldn't fit on this plane, but that's fine. These four points would allow us to sketch f of x by drawing a line through those points. So there's f of x. And now that we have f of x, we can begin sketching the inverse function. So we'll plot the points from the table of values for the inverse, beginning with 2, 0. The next point would be 1, negative 1. The next point would be negative 2, negative 2. The next point would be negative 7, negative 3. We won't plot negative 14, negative 4, but we can use those points to sketch the inverse function. And we see that f of x and its inverse are symmetrical or reflect across the line y is equal to x. So that is the answer to question number 16. Let's now have a look at question number 17. Determine if the functions are inverses. And we are given f of x is equal to x minus 2, and g of x is equal to x plus 2. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step 1, write the expression for the outer function. So we'll start by testing f of g of x, and then we'll test g of f of x to see if they both give us x as our outcome. So the outer function for f of g of x is the f function, which is x minus 2. And now step 2, we want to replace each x with the expression of the inner function. So we have an x here and we want to replace it with the g function, which is x plus 2. So we'll get x plus 2 minus 2. And now that we've done that, we want to now evaluate this expression. 2 minus 2 cancel each other out, leaving us with just x. So f of g of x does give us x. So now we want to switch the functions to g of f of x, and now test this. So now we write the expression for the outer function, which is the g function, x plus 2. And then we replace this x here with the inner function, the f function, which is x minus 2. And then we'll get plus 2. And now that we've done this, we evaluate the expression. Negative 2 plus 2 cancel each other out, leaving us with just x. So since f of g of x 
and g of f of x both give us an outcome of x, that confirms that f of x and g of x are inverses. So that is the answer to question number 17. Let's now have a look at question number 18. Determine if the functions are inverses. And we are given f of x is equal to 4x plus 1. And g of x is equal to x over 4 minus 1. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step 1, write the expression for the outer function. So we'll first test f of g of x. So the outer function is the f function, 4x plus 1. And then step 2, we want to replace each x with the expression of the inner function, the g function. So we replace this x here with x over 4 minus 1. And now we can evaluate this expression to see if we get x. When we distribute this 4 inside of the parentheses to these two terms, we get x, the 4 over 4 cancel each other out, leaving us with x. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, and then we have plus 1. Negative 4 plus 1 is equal to negative 3. So we find that f of g of x is equal to x minus 3, and that does not equal x which lets us know that f of x and g of x are not inverses. We do not need to test g of f of x since f of g of x did not produce an outcome of x. So that is the answer to question number 18. Let's now have a look at question number 19. Determine if the functions are inverses. And we are given f of x is equal to negative 3x plus 5. And g of x is equal to negative x minus 5 over 3. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, write the expression for the outer function, the f function. So that would be negative three x plus five. And now step two, we want to replace each x with the expression of the inner function, which is the g function. So we replace this x here with negative x minus five over three. And now we want to evaluate this expression we distribute this negative three to this fraction. This negative three and this negative three cancel each other out, leaving us with x minus five plus five. Negative five plus five cancel each other out, leaving us with just x. So we find that f of g of x does produce an outcome of x. So we want to now switch the f and the g functions and test g of f of x to see if we also get x for this. So we'll start by writing the expression for the outer function, the g function, which is negative x minus five over three. And now we want to replace each x with the expression of the inner function, which would be the f function. So we replace this x with negative three x plus five, and then we'll get minus five as well. And now that we've done that, we can evaluate this expression. Five minus five cancel each other out, leaving us with negative three x over negative three. Negative three divided by negative three cancel each other out, leaving us with just x. So since both f of g of x and g of f of x have an outcome of x, that confirms that f of x and g of x are inverses.
So that is the answer to question number 19. Let's now have a look at question number 20. Determine if the functions are inverses. And we are given f of x is equal to negative x squared plus 5. And g of x is equal to the square root of negative x plus 5. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, write the expression for the outer function. So we'll test f of g of x first. So the outer function is the f function, which is negative x squared plus five. And now step two, we'll replace each x with the expression of the inner function, which is our g function. So we have negative x squared. So we want to replace this x with the square root of negative x plus five. So we'll get negative the square root of negative x plus five squared, and then plus five. And now we can evaluate the expression. So since we're squaring a radical, we can remove the radical in the exponent, and that leaves us with negative x plus five inside of the parentheses. And then we distribute this negative one to both of these terms. Negative one times negative x would give us x, and negative one times five would give us negative five. And then we have plus five. Negative five and positive five cancel each other out, leaving us with just x. So we find that f of g of x does equal x. So now we can switch the f and the g functions and test g of f of x to see if this equals x as well. So we want to write the expression for the outer function, which is the g function, the square root of negative x plus five. And then we want to replace each x with the expression of our inner function, the f function. So we replace this x here with negative x squared plus five. And now we evaluate this expression when we distribute this negative one to both of these terms, negative one times negative x squared would give us positive x squared. Negative one times positive five gives us negative five plus five. Negative five and positive five cancel each other out. And the square root of x squared is equal to x. So we find that f of g of x and g of f of x both equal x. So this confirms that f of x and g of x are inverses. So that is the answer to question number 20. Let's now have a look at question number 21. Find the inverse of the function and check the answer. And we're given f of x is equal to 8x minus 2. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, we want to replace f of x with y. So that gives us y is equal to eight x minus two. And now step two, we want to rewrite this equation by switching the y and the x. So that would give us x is equal to eight y minus two. And now step three, we want to solve for y. So we'll begin by adding two to both sides, giving us eight y is equal to x plus two. And to remove this coefficient of eight, we want to divide both sides by eight showing us y is equal to x plus two over eight. And now that we've solved for y, we now want to replace this y with the inverse of the f function. So we find that the inverse function is equal to x plus two divided by eight. 
And we can check this answer by using the composition of functions method. So we'll first test f of the inverse of x. So we begin by writing the expression for the outer function, the f function, which is 8x minus 2. And now we want to replace this x with the expression for the inverse function, which is x plus 2 over 8. And now we want to evaluate this expression to see if we get x. We distribute this 8 to this fraction. This 8 cancels out with the denominator, leaving us with x plus 2 minus 2. And 2 minus 2 gives us 0, so those cancel each other out, leaving us with x. So the first order does work. We get an outcome of x. So now we want to switch the functions and test to see if this gives us x as well. So we begin by writing the expression for the outer function, the inverse function, which is x plus 2 over 8. And then we want to replace the x with the expression of the inner function, the f function. So we replace this x with 8x minus 2, and then we'll have plus 2. And now we evaluate this expression. Negative 2 and positive 2 cancel each other out, leaving us with 8x over 8. 8 over 8 cancel each other out, leaving us with x. So since both orders give us an outcome of x, that confirms that the inverse function is x plus 2 over 8. So that is the answer to question number 21. Let's now have a look at question number 22. Find the inverse of the function and check the answer. And we are given f of x is equal to negative 4x plus 1. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step 1. Replace f of x with y. This gives us an equation y is equal to negative 4x plus 1. And now step 2, we want to rewrite the equation by switching where the y and the x are placed. So that gives us x is equal to negative 4y plus 1. And now step 3, we want to solve for y. So we begin by subtracting 1 from both sides, giving us x minus 1 is equal to negative 4y. And now to remove this coefficient of negative 4, we divide both sides by negative 4, showing us y is equal to negative x minus 1 over 4. And now that we've solved for y, we can replace this y with the inverse function. So we find that the inverse is equal to negative x minus 1 divided by 4. And we can check the answer by using the composition of functions method. So we'll first test f of inverse of x. So we'll begin by writing the expression for the outer function, which is the f function negative 4x plus 1. And then we'll replace this x here with the expression of the inner function, the inverse function, which is negative x minus 1 over 4. And now we'll evaluate this expression to see if we get x. We distribute this negative 4 to this fraction. This negative 4 cancels out with the denominator, negative 4. So that leaves us with x minus 1 plus 1. And negative 1 plus 1 cancel each other out, leaving us with x. So the first order does give us an outcome of x, so that works. So now we want to switch the order of these functions. And now test this order to see if we get x. So we write the expression for the inverse function negative x minus 1 over 4. 
and then we replace this x here with the expression of the inner function, the f function. So we get negative 4x plus 1 minus 1 in the numerator. And now we evaluate. 1 minus 1 cancel each other out, leaving us with negative 4x over negative 4. Negative 4 over negative 4 cancel each other out, leaving us with just x. So the composition of functions confirms that the inverse function is negative x minus 1 over 4. So that is the answer to question number 22. Let's now have a look at question number 23. Find the inverse of the function and check the answer. And we are given f of x is equal to x squared minus 9. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, replace f of x with y. This gives us an equation, y is equal to x squared minus nine. And now step two, we want to rewrite the equation by switching where the x and y's are placed. So that would give us an equation, x is equal to y squared minus nine. And now that we've rearranged the equation, we want to solve for y. So we'll begin by adding 9 to both sides, giving us x plus 9 is equal to y squared. And now to remove this exponent of 2, we want to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of y squared is y, and that's equal to the square root of x plus 9. And now that we've solved for y, we want to replace this y with the inverse of f. So we find that the inverse function is equal to the square root of x plus 9. And we can test this by using the composition of functions method. So we'll begin by testing f of inverse of x. So we write the expression for the outer function, the f function which is x squared minus 9. And then we replace each x with the expression of the inner function, the inverse. So we get the square root of x plus 9 squared minus 9. And now we evaluate. We're squaring a square root, so that removes the radical, leaving us with x plus 9 minus 9. 9 minus 9 cancel each other out, leaving us with just x. So the first order does produce x, so that works. So now we want to switch the order of the functions and see if this produces an outcome of x as well. So we write the expression for the outer function, which is the inverse function, the square root of x plus 9. And now we replace this x here with the expression of the inner function, the f function, x squared minus 9. So we'll get the square root of x squared minus 9 plus 9. And now we evaluate this expression. Negative 9 plus 9 cancel each other out, leaving us with the square root of x squared. And the square root of x squared is equal to x. So since both orders give us an outcome of x, that confirms that the inverse function is the square root of x plus 9. So that is the answer to question number 23. Let's now have a look at question number 24. Find the inverse of the function and check the answer. And we are given f of x is equal to the square root of negative 2x plus 5. Pause the video, answer this question, and then press play when you are ready to begin. Step 2. 
step one, replace f of x with y. That gives us the equation y is equal to the square root of negative 2x plus 5. And now step two, we want to rewrite the equation by switching where the x and y's are placed. So that gives us an equation of x is equal to the square root of negative 2y plus 5. And now we want to solve for y. So we'll begin by removing this radical, which we do by squaring both sides. When we do, that gives us x squared is equal. We can then get rid of the radical, so we'll be left with negative 2y plus 5. And now we subtract 5 from both sides, giving us x squared minus 5 is equal to negative 2y. And now we divide both sides by negative 2 to remove this coefficient, leaving us with y is equal to x squared minus 5 over negative 2. And now we can replace this y with the inverse of f, showing us that the inverse function is equal to x squared minus 5 over negative 2. And we check this answer by using the composition of functions method. So we begin by writing the expression for the outer function, the f function, the square root of negative 2x plus 5. And now we replace this x with the expression of the inner function, the inverse function. So we'll put negative x squared minus 5 over 2 here. And now we evaluate. When we distribute this negative 2 to this fraction, this negative 2 negates with this denominator, negative 2. So that will leave us with x squared minus 5 plus 5 as our radicand under that radical. Negative 5 plus 5 cancel each other out, leaving us with the square root of x squared. And the square root of x squared is equal to x. So the first order does give us x, so that works. So now we want to switch the order of the functions and test that order to see if we get x. So we write the expression for the outer function, the inverse. So we write negative x squared minus 5 over 2. And then we replace the x squared here with the expression of the inner function, f of x. So we have the square root of negative 2x plus 5 squared minus 5 in our numerator. And now we evaluate. We remove the radical since we're squaring. So we get negative 2x plus 5 minus 5 in the numerator. 5 minus 5 cancel each other out, leaving us with negative 2x over negative 2. And negative 2 cancels out negative 2, leaving us with x. So since both orders give us an outcome of x, that confirms that the inverse function is equal to negative x squared minus 5 over 2. And that wraps up this video, practice set number one to our inverse functions chapter. Should you have any follow-up questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Or you can contact a tutor in your neighborhood by visiting bookandtable.com or by downloading our app on the App Store. Peace.